Hey, what's happening? This is Ken Boyd, man. Mr. Ken Boyd online. I can be found at the Ken Boyd Show. And I'm here in my favorite city, the city I love so much, Houston, Texas. And this is Real Deal with a Kill. Did six push ups this morning. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You ain't never tell me to stop. Shit. No earphones? Did you? No, no earphones. Okay. We right here, there's no point. You gonna play uh, Whoop That Trick? We can, it'll be in it. Okay. Cause it, this just remind me of the, the setup, especially you got that box fan over there. Yo, real deal with the kill. Another episode. Man, I'm gonna shout this episode out to the homie David, man, yes. the manager of Tony Rock, who I had on the beginning. Yes. Now I got comedian Ken Boyd, indeed, coming all the indeed. way from the north side today in some crusty draws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the north side, he means New York City. And then when I flew here, I was back on the north side again of Houston, Texas, and they lost my bag, so I got to wait for that to come in. My, so that, that's why my drawers is crusty. My question is, why are you on your knees on the on the chair? That's my question. Hey, man, you ain't never been on your knees in the chair before? Well, first of all, I never got on my knees very often. That's not what I heard, the, man. The, the, that, that, <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you, man. I, never got I, my did, knees I did my research before I agreed to do this interview. So, so what, you, what did you read? You, oh, goddamn Monday. I, I almost heard, dropped the camera Monday. It's, it's two things I heard. <laughs> One thing I heard, you was on your knees in the chair, and your cameraman almost, he liked to drop the, the camera from time to time. Well, at least he ain't dropping the soap. That's that's the good thing. At least he ain't the soap. Yeah, man, but it's good to be back, man. It's good to Crusty have Crusty draws or not, man. It's home. Yeah, it's still yeah. home sweet home. Yeah, and I smell it too. Yeah, I smell it. It'd be like that sometimes. It happens. Man. But you but you here for Trade Day weekend. Indeed. Trade I was supposed day. to get here last night. I was supposed to get here like six last night. But these man, hey man, anybody listening, I don't know if these people sponsor y'all or what. American Airlines sucks. You could talk sh all the shit you they want, because we don't suck. have none of their sponsorships right now. Do you hear me? Never fly American Airlines. Why do I, will, I will get on a crop duster before I get on American Airlines. Would you get on Spirit before you get on American Airlines? Man, don't insult me. I'm, hey, American Airlines suck, according to you, so Man. I'm asking. So, I thought American Airlines was good, though. No, I watch movies on no, them. I'm, no, I'm eating no. good food. You know, I'm Everything like, else is good but American Airlines. I was supposed to be here last night, 6.30. I had a connecting flight from New York to North Carolina. And then from North Carolina to here in Houston, uh, the original flight was pushed back. Uh -huh. Then when I finally got to North Carolina, the flight to Houston was canceled. Had to spend a night in North Carolina. And then uh, in the morning, they was talking about some more connections. Like, yeah, you get to Houston around uh, noon. I was like, that's too late. Had them book. I had booked another flight, United, came straight here. And now my bag is still, you know. Floating around with somewhere. With the American, Al American Airlines. Trash, man. So basically, Trash. you gotta go up to the airport and try to get your bag. Uh, I got them delivering it to me, man. I'm oh, Ken, Ken Boyd. I got to get oh, the shit, gab, that's Ken man. Boyd. That's, hey, hey, I have to, you know. Some of us don't have that type of tree. We gotta take our ass to the airport. Now nah, I'm joking. That's that's a standard uh, uh, courtesy that they provide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making it sound like I'm cool and shit. Yeah, I gift the guy, but yeah, that's the step. Yeah, you big time, dog. Before I said that, anybody watching was like, that nigga lying. They do that for everybody. But yeah, they, it's a standard curse. They'll, they'll, if they uh, miss, if they cancel your flight, if they lose your bag, they'll drop it off to you. But you're still Ken Boyd, though, I'm man. Still Ken I, I, I want to ask you that, man. How long you been doing stand up co comedy? Well, I've been Ken Boyd my whole life. You know, uh, a lot of people don't believe me, man, but it's really me. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. Everybody watch this and don't know who I am. I'm like, who the fuck is this asshole? This nigga think he's the shit. Uh, 10 years. I just celebrated 10 years, man. Oh, damn. Last month. Last month, I celebrated my 10th year anniversary here in Houston. Because uh, I come here every June right. to do a homecoming show. Yeah. Uh, cause I you're from here. Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. North side. It's an area called Trinity Garden. Yep, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking Indeed. about. Indeed, a lot of drugs and prostitution around there. Oh, so everybody yeah. watching, if you ever come to Houston, go to Trinity Garden. Enjoy yourself, man, and you know, <laughs> boost the economy. All Shout the, out to the pastor of the Trinity yeah, Garden. All the ladies, go to Trinity Garden. Make you a quick $40 or something, man. You know, Ken will provide you a service. It's That's what he's telling the streets. you. But, um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I left in June to move to New York in 2013. Okay. It's five years ago. So every June I come back to do okay. a homecoming show. So I started... Uh, in 2008. Right. So 2008 from 2013, that's five years. Yeah. And then I moved to New York from 2013 to now. It's another five years. Ten years, man. Ten years. Went by like that. So la years. well, you did a show last last month. Last month I was at the Houston Improv. Every June I go to the Houston Improv, man, yeah. and just celebrate another year of uh, you know, performing and uh, another year of me, uh, you know, 
the anniversary of me living in New York. And it's just, it just makes sense because I left in June, so I come back in June and do a show. Uh, so Houston Improv, 500 seat, I always do well, I always sell out, man. I always do like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Man, the crowd comes out every time. Same people buy tickets every year, man. Same people. The same people every year. And at a certain point, I'm like, ain't y'all people tired of seeing me? But every year, they're getting three, four, five, a, a package of 10, 15, whatever tickets, they come out, man. How long have yeah. you been doing stand? Like, you say you've been doing for 10 years, but like, how old? Like when you like when you first started like when oh when knew. the when the idea came yeah man I want to say about it was either late teens or early twenties either nineteen twenty something like that I was working at uh Telecheck you know about Telecheck no you've heard of this place called Telecheck I'm young Telecheck how old are you I'm twenty four. 24? Yes, sir. You like you 41 years I get old, that all man. the time. Yeah, you and look terrible. You know what? You got and kids? I'm, I got, yes, I do. That's what it is. That's, I look like I got kids. You, you got, I got kids face. You got slow pull-out face. <laughs> <laughs> or no pull-out face. <laughs> like, you just leave it in there every time. Fuck it. This is going to be, what? You got, you got the baby. Fuck it. Yeah, man. What's me the name? Uh, So, yeah, I was working at Telecheck. Telecheck is a place where, um... I don't, I don't know if they're as uh, prominent as they used to be. Mm-hmm. But you, you remember you used to walk into a business or a place of business, an establishment, and there used to be a red sign on the door that said, checks are protected by telecheck. But people don't write checks no more. Right. So I don't think they're as uh, uh, in demand as, as they once were. Basically, collection agency. Okay. The, the short of it. Uh, you wrote a check. It didn't go through. I was the dude to call you to say, hey. You wrote this check. It didn't go through. You so how, do, do you still remember how your voice was when you used to call? You know how people put that voice on and they be like, welcome to Telecheck. Yeah, that movie is real. That movie, uh, what's that new movie that's out? That uh, Was it Spike Lee? Sorry, sorry to Bother You? They was doing cold calls. Did you see the advertisements for that? The guy from Atlanta and the guy from Get Out, Skinny Guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that okay. Guy. Yeah. I, haven't seen, I haven't seen the full movie, but yeah. you know that white voice shit right. is the realest shit in the world. Realest shit in the world. So you had to put that on when you was working there. I mean, you had to do something. You had to do something, man, because you couldn't. The way I'm speaking now, I couldn't call, hey, you wrote a check, my yeah. nigga. It didn't go through. <laughs> What's, what up, though? What's up with yeah. that? So, uh, so I was working there, and like I said, basically it's a collection agency. So if you listen to it, this is probably why my voice sounds so familiar to half the people watching this right now. I used to be in collections. And, mm-hmm. you know, me and this other guy, this other funny guy, we used to have this, you know, just this comedic banter back and forth, man, blah, 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 blah. And we was just the funny guys in the room. And I think one day someone was like, yeah, yeah, y'all funny. Y'all think y'all could do stand-up ever? And the other guy was like, man, oh, no, I couldn't do that. And I was the one that was like, yeah, I think I, I, think I could do it. You was the bold one. You was so, like, I can do it. So it was just, you know, after that, that's when the gears started turning. And at a certain point, it just became a personal challenge to me. Yeah. Like, I wanted to fight, because I've always been a funny guy, school, any job I ever had, funny guy, you know, around the family. Anybody I meet, oh man, you so funny. But I, the challenge came was like, okay, can I uh, have this same effect on people, or can I have produced this same amount of levity and joy and laughter in right. front of complete strangers, right. people that don't know me, never seen me, man, just cold walk up, and so that's where the that's where the challenge came from. I want to challenge myself, yeah. and that was uh, now actually that was twenty, that was two thousand six. Yeah. That I did for the first time. It was terrible. Terrible. Really? That's what now watch this. Now, I'm telling you, I just told you I, I've been doing stand up for ten years. Right. First time I ever went on stage was two thousand six though. Right. So now look, watch this. It went that bad that I don't even count it. I I, I went up, it was terrible. I didn't do I didn't touch the stage for two years. You remember years. the location? Yeah, it's a place called um Times Square on the south side. I don't think it's uh, even up anymore. If it is, I don't know what they're doing with it. Big holding wild joint. Can't remember the name of the street it was on, man. Uh, was it Home Clock? I want to say it was at Home Clock, man. It was on the south side. A guy named Thomas Webb used to run it on Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah look, see if you can look that up. But um, yeah, it was it was a holding wild joint. Older people there. Jerry huh. Curls, Gold Teeth. Oh, Cop- it, it was It was old people, man. It was stone cold old people. And so. Uh, I think I had three minutes, five minutes, and I didn't know what I was doing. It was terrible, man. And then so after that, I was like, okay. I challenged myself. I was curious. I found out, fuck it, I'm done. I'm going to go finish college, and, and that's yeah. it. I'm going to get my degree and do, you know, you know, major and whatever and get some type of job, whatever. And I didn't do nothing for two years. I was done. Two right. years. I didn't, you know. But the whole time, man, it was just 
it never left. It was like, yeah, man, come on. Yeah. Try this thing one more time. And at man. first you was like, ah. I'm like, man, you know, I thought I was crazy. I'm talking to myself like, nigga, fuck you. I ain't doing nothing, man. <laughs> I just tried it. I ain't, you know. So if you ain't do comedy, what you would have done? Well, I started doing stand-up in back. I, I got back on stage in 2008, and I was in college at the time. And I was basically getting my associate's degree, like, you know, the first two-year shit before you start your your real, right. um, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, before you start your uh, undergrad. Undergrad, yeah. So, um by the time I even, uh, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to do marketing and advertising. Okay. Marketing and advertising, and I was going to get my associates from uh, HCC, then transfer to a uh, U of H, and I was going to be uh, in marketing and that. That was the plan. You didn't want to do TSU. I would. I would have preferred to do U of H, uh, just because. Well, I'm at TSU. That's why. I well, nobody's perfect, man. You know, yeah. everybody got to get in where they fit in, man. Yeah. You know, right, right, right. You know, so hey, you know, maybe one day. Right, right. don't touch me again. (laughs) This interview is over. (laughs) But no, that was the plan, man. And um, and right in 2008, I was just about to finish uh, the first two years of college, and I was, you know, was getting my associate's degree. Yo. And that's when I just couldn't take it no more, man. The, the thought was always there those two years. Like, yo, right. come on, man. Get back on stage. Come on, man. Just yeah. Try it one more time, man. And if it don't go right, fuck, fuck it. it. Then you go to school right. and all that. But come try this thing one more time. One more. So I went to uh, 2008. I went to this place called, that's not even a place anymore, this place called The Laugh Stop. Yeah, on Wall Street by the American whatever building on. Don't they got Laugh Stop in different places in America? Like, or. Uh, not right, that I called. Not that I know of. The Improvs and Funny Bones are franchise. Laugh, okay. laugh stop. I I haven't seen any, unless it's just places I don't know about. Yeah. So uh, they now granted. This, here's the difference. The first time was a hole in the wall. The second time I went, it was an established, actual comedy club. Like right. I was doing open mic. Right. So I signed up for that, and this was right at the time. And you can look it up. Uh, this is right at the time the Chris Brown and Rihanna thing happened. It just, it had just happened. Look up the year. It's 2008. Yeah, and I re- yeah, I remember that. And I remember because that's what I talked about. That It yeah. had just happened. So that was like the hot topic as a Look, comedian. My nigga, I think it happened either the night before, no more than two days prior than I did that open mic. It had, it was so fresh. Right. So that's why I was like, okay, well, let me let me see if I can do something with this. I had three minutes. Right. Man, ripped. Man. Ripped. Well, you know, it's an open mic. How, how hard can you rip at an open mic? But... It went well, yeah. and so uh, after that, I was just, I remember feeling that like that feeling like, oh shit, this the way it's supposed to go. Yeah, this the way it's supposed to feel. This is this is it. Oh, yeah. nigga, I'm, I was hooked. Yeah, better or worse, I say, nigga, I'm, I'm, that's it. Is there like a, a limit? Stand up comedian. Is that won't ask you this, dog? Because you because obviously you're a comedian. So obviously, is there a limit? Is there a limitation to what you say on stage? Because nowadays, people is like more sensitive now to what people say on stage. So when, do you go into your stand-up with a limitation? Like, I don't want to touch this, that, and the third. Or you like, fuck it. I'm going to just talk about whatever that comes to my mind at that moment. Or I'm going to write it out the day before. Hey, man, you got to push the limits, man. You got to push the limits, man. Because if it, it's not art if you just, if you're bound by political correctness. Or if you're bound by uh, public opinion, or what's socially accepted and what's not, man, it's, that's not art, man. No yeah. real art can live in a box. Yeah. You know. And this is just my opinion, man. This is just how I feel. I'm one person. I don't speak for every comedian, or songwriter, or you know, or rapper, or whatever. I'm yeah. telling you my approach, man. But I think everything can be addressed with tact. Yeah. You know, if it's tactful, man, you do it tactfully. I think everything can be addressed. No yeah. matter what it is, man. You know, I, I believe there's humor in everything. I truly believe that. Right. And then, you know, it, just to, to say that certain things are off topic, man, it, you, you're basically telling me that no humor can exist in this, in this one topic or these, uh, this, the, this list of topics. And I just don't buy that, man. Right. I just truly don't. You know, I don't believe that, man. I think it's, 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 it's humor and it's drama. It's comedy and it's... And it's a, a disaster, man. That's the that's the ebbs and flow. That's the balance, man. You can't really can't have one without the other. You take away one, then the other suffers. Mm-hmm. That's humor and everything, man. I remember I was um, I was on stage once. Uh, I performed at this place in New York called um, 
LOL. It's in Times Square. Mm-hmm. LOL Comedy Club. I heard about that place. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a regular there. And, uh, you know, I'm fucking around on stage one night, man. I like to just play. I like to just whatever. I got my jokes. I got stuff that I wrote. Right. But genuine, I genuinely like to just be in the moment and just play and engage the crowd and just dick around, man. That's what I really, really like to do. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm up there, man. I'm just, whatever. I'm playing around. And um, I think I was talking to this, this older woman. She had to be, I don't know, uh, let's just say maybe late 50s or 60s right. or something like that. And you know, I'm just talking to a man. Hey, you single? And she said, no, I'm a widow. Mm. Right? And everybody in the room, uh, yeah. you know. So immediately I came back. So I, so I look at a real, you know, central. I was like, oh, so you're single, huh? You know, and then boom, immediately everyone in the crowd, the, the spirits was lifted. Because they went from ah to ah. You know, yeah. I could have easily backed back with my tail between my legs. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you. But there's humor in everything, man. Right, right. There's humor in everything. Did she take it? How does she take it when you, when you, when you? I've like, never had, um, I've never had anyone get upset with me about, you know, um, this type of thing that I'm saying. Or if they did, I basically abandoned the show. And I, there was one, it's a, it's a couple times. One time in particular, uh, I said a joke that ends it. The, the joke ends in me saying Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And that's the punchline, right? Mm-hmm. As a white, it was a white family in the crowd. It was a uh, dad, mom, and two daughters. But the daughters were adults. Yeah. As soon as I said, I ended the joke with Black Lives Matter, they, the one of the daughters yelled out, All Lives Matter. Mm. And man, I couldn't, man, it's just something about that just didn't sit Shit well with yo. me, man. It just struck me so deeply. And I was just like, and this was a family friendly show. Yeah. This was a family friendly show where you, you really, you're not supposed to use. Language, right? You know, adult language. You're supposed to keep it clean. It's a family friendly. Right. The first show of the night is always family friendly. And yeah. when she said that, she was like, "All lives matter." I was like, hey, "Bitch, that's, uh, that's nope. the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. You crazy?" So yeah. we got into this little thing, man. But outside of that, me actually uh, taking something personal, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from a person and, and bringing it to the light and making hu- making humor, no one's ever got upset with me with that, man. Right? Because I'm telling you, man, that's just my that's my religion, man. Humor mm. lies everywhere. Now you may not; it might take you some time or some years mm-hmm. to see it. I'm talking everything: death, divorce, um, you know, the, the trans community, man, oppression. Everything yeah. is humor in everything, man. Why do you think this, this society now is more sensitive than it's ever been? Do you think social media plays a huge role in that? Mm, social media, social media, maybe to a degree. Mm-hmm. But my humble opinion, man, I think uh, upbringing has a lot to do with it. I don't think uh, the parents of this generation, they don't have the parents that we had. Right. Or that I had, or our parents had, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. And maybe I'm oversimplifying it, man, you know, but this may, uh, this may just be one contributing factor to the overall pussification of, uh, of today's America, man. Mm-hmm. But seriously, man, I think, ba- I think back to my childhood, man. It was just certain things that was just the norm. You didn't tell on anybody else. You know, you didn't. It, you just conducted yourself a certain way. It was just rules, man. But I don't yeah. think, I, I'm not going to say there's no rules anymore, but the rules have changed. You know, um, I, sa- I said this on stage once. Um, and this actually happened. This, mm-hmm. this, this is the beautiful thing about stand-up comedy, man. You experience something, man, you just take it to the stage. And if you're, if you're really, really good, there's very little you have to add to reality. Right. Like, you can, you can get on stage and just say, hey, this is what happened. And then the, the artistry, you just sprinkle a little bit of humor on the reality. Right. So this actually happened. I'm in the green room. And who am I to say... You know, yeah, I have no problem with to them, speak though. against it. And you, you said something I kind of missed on my original point, man. You know, today's society, and I'm about to bring it home, man. You really helped me out with it. You, you, uh, you sparked this in my brain. In today's society, feelings overlap logic. Mm-hmm. That's never happened before yep. in, in, in history. Mm-hmm. So now is, is the court of public opinion is, is more uh, damaging than actual court of law. Right. You know? Right. So feelings and collective feelings, hey, we don't think this is right, you know, 
as a as a whole, those feelings might be bogus, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I, when I told I, I told this to someone one time, man. Just because you feel something, man, doesn't make it legitimate. Now I'm right. not I'm not speaking towards uh, you feeling like you were born the wrong gender. I'm not speaking towards that at all. But I am speaking towards <clears throat> is uh, the general principle of, hey man, I feel this way, right? Um, passionately or strongly, but you could you could be wrong and still passionately feel what you feel, right? Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's real. Doesn't mean it's legitimate. Exactly. You know, just like intuition, you're gonna feel just as strongly when you're right as when you're wrong. Right. Like my gut is telling me to do this, and you might do that, and oh, it was right. Yeah, mm-hmm. intuition. My gut told me, or the opposite way. Man, my gut is telling me to do this. And it's like, boom. Oh, uh, I fucked up. Right, right. The, nothing inside of you is gonna say, man. My gut is telling me to do this. I know this ain't the right thing to do, yeah. but my gut is. No one thinks that way. You're gonna say, man, my gut, man. I bet this is the right thing to do. Exactly. So just because you feel it, man, you know, doesn't mean it's legitimate. And yeah. I, I say that to say that this society in today's generation, man, everything is is. Almost exclusively emotional, emotionally driven, you know, mm-hmm. feelings, feelings, feelings. This is how I feel, but and logic has kind of taken the back seat, mm-hmm. you know. So, I think everything has a time frame on it. You know, yeah. I think this will last for as long as it'll last, and then whatever. Mm-hmm. Who knows? It might be the new wave that'll be sustained. I'm just glad I'm not a 19 or 22 year old that can be um, uh, influenced by, you know the norm of today. Yeah. You know, I can look at certain things like even in my generation, I'm like that and everyone would be in on it. I'd be looking like that's yeah. that's not right. This exactly. Like girls getting fake asses like, yo, why you, your thine as purport your ratio is off. Like just because you see it on social media, you gonna have to go get your body done as well too. Like, yeah. like and that's that's the logic side. But on the emotional side, it can be argued like, hey look, you know, um What's the what's the combination word I'm looking for? It could be, I this is the way I want to look. Yeah. Or this was this is what gives me confidence. Yeah. Or this is like you going to the barber shop or getting a new outfit or getting a new pair of shoes and look. I want to look good. Right. So I invested. My, I mean, who's right and who's wrong? Right. You know, um, I'm not the one to say, man. I can have my opinion. I don't dig it. I don't. You know, I like a nice, normal, natural. I like say you like. You know, I like I like I like the tiger I like the tiger marks on her ass. Yeah, but I'm wise enough to know that now. Cause I'm about to bring it home. I'm wise enough to know just because I feel that way, right? Doesn't mean it's law. It's not. It's not uh, uh, the gospel. Just because I like a natural butt, right. I'm one guy. Exactly. Who cares what I think? You know. Now, with, when it comes to these type of women, would I be with them? No, mm-hmm. I sleep with them. Mm-hmm. But that's all I'm gonna do with them. Yeah. You know. But that's me. You got some guys like, oh shit, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's new age. Yo, man, yo, she fine. Her ass fake. I don't care. Yeah, dudes don't care. Or she was born a guy. I don't care. Hey, whatever. Now we can segue to my next topic. I had been talking to people about this the last couple of episodes. The well, you live in you live in New York. What part of New York you live in? I just moved to Flatbush, Brooklyn, man. Flatbush, Brooklyn. I was in uh, I was in Harlem for years. I was on One Sixteenth and Fifth for four years. I just moved to Flatbush like a month ago. Okay. I mean, I'm a Brooklynite. So you can speak on this because you're from here. What would you rate the women of Houston as some as if you rank the most? Number the with the, one. Okay. Here we go. We got the debate. Now it's another debate. Number okay. one. Kim oh. Bo- hey, look, look at me. Kim Boy been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. Houston has the absolute baddest women on this side of the uh, the Milky Way. You understand me? I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. Houston got them gals, man. To be, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, an actress. Getting the music business, music business, business or whatever. Or whatever. So, so, I'll say I'll half, say half maybe or maybe three quarters, three quarters of, the, of the, 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 the people that live in. Live in. Very, very few people, not, not very few, very few but, but I would say, I would say you get you 10, 10 people, people in a room, room 10, 10 women, women uh, that live in, live in LA, LA in one room, one room I would say four of them. Or from somewhere else. So I say 40% of the women are like, not even from there. No matter how no matter they, how they look. look. Here's another, another thing. thing. Very big chance they have some work done. You in Los Angeles, California. I'm willing, if I was a gambling man, I'll put money that you got something done. So one, you're not really from there. Two, 
that's, that's not, not really, really how you look. It's organic. It's organic in Houston. It's organic, it's organic and, and it's, it's well, I guess I could say domestic, domestic or it's or local. Local. Right, right. Not, not only do they look good, good they're, they're actually, actually from, I, mean, I mean, this is this the is best crop of women, women you're going to find. find. That's, that's why my number one. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. I'm convinced. I, 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 I can agree, agree with you. I was trying to spark a little debate, but there's nothing to debate because it's, it's, it's true. Right. 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 Houston, 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 yeah. This is a woman, a woman geeking, geeking like, like, yo, there's some bad bitches around here, man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you got damn right. I want to word, word like, like, out of, out of all, like, like, when people cheat. cheat. Like, I want to word, word like, words like, 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 who's, like, like, the top six like, words people, people, like, most like, likely, like, like Marriage, marriage divorce, divorce, like divorce, divorce rate, 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 like cheating rate. rate. You, know you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, I feel like, I feel like it's very, very hard, hard to, be to be in a relationship, relationship in Houston. In Houston. And I'm and from born and raised. I'm just born for six years. Hey, you jack it off every night, huh? Watching porn. At least, at least once, once or twice. twice. And you know what I'm saying? saying? Chase, Chase like, like, a like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? mean? Palm, palm be soft and shit because of the lotion. And they got and knuckles, knuckles on the inside, inside of his palm. palm. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> like, yo, like, <laughs> single for six, <laughs> almost six, six years, years. You know what I mean? It's hard. Because I'm still in awe, Ken, for when I go out. And I'm like, God damn. I cannot be a It's very... Very, very hard, hard. But, but I can I say on the mindset of Houston, Houston women, women, it's not, it's on, the not on the top. Like the like mindset, mindset wise, wise. look good is one, one of the top two, three, two cities. three cities. But as far as, as, far as mine, mine yeah, so, yeah. So. I'm gonna tell, tell you why. why. I, go I go out to sports, sports bars, bars, I go to clubs every once in a while. And in this generation, my generation, I'm 24. Their mindset and their expectation. It's like, it's like if you're not, you not making this certain, this certain amount of money, money oh. you ain't got this. Or you in a club and you ain't got, 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 no got, got no section, then, then you know, you know what are you doing? We ain't going to talk to you. Because I go to these sections and clubs sometimes. And these females, I had yet to see a group of women come to me. Say if I say me up section, right? And we invite like, you know, few chicks out there and all that. I re- I re- I'm not I'm expecting, expecting you to do it, but, but I, respect I respect the hell out of a woman, woman that, brought that brought her friends, friends and be like, yo, you know what? We see these dudes putting four and five. Let's just pitch let's 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 get on about it. You know what I'm saying? But they expect us to do everything. That's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And that's like the mindset of the women out here now. They get they get impressed by the smallest things, like the easiest things. Like, oh my God, he has a Bentley. It's rented. Oh, he, oh has he has this. this. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, they get they impressed, get impressed by, the by the smallest things, things because, because I feel like, like what plays a part out here is the clubs. Because I don't know how it is in New York, but clubs out here, clubs here, clubs here, clubs here is pretty strong, man, but it can be deceiving. I mean, look at where you at, man. You're in a bar. You're in a club. Who do you expect to meet? That's true. That's true. Of substance in, in a bar. Not saying it's impossible. It's impossible. You, know, you know, people of substance like to go out and enjoy themselves too. too. But, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying man, is, is, is I think you should lower your, your expectations, expectations as far as, as, far as uh, um, uh, uh, substance, substance in a club, club or bar. bar. You're a bar. You know? You know? Who goes, Who goes looking for their wife? Well, that's well, true. That's true. Ball. Ball. Not saying that, that, but like, like you know, you talking know, to, just talking to certain people, they say the same thing too. It's like, like man, these people are the mindset out here. You know what I mean? Okay, you know, I think what you're saying is across the board, and not to say that all women are just looking for, you know, people to have that. But but you gotta realize, man, if somebody pulls up in Bentley, even even us dudes, we gonna be like, oh shit, damn. Oh, damn. Okay, cool. Damn, this shit is nice, man. And we just, and we just, we just, we guys. just guys. Yeah, like we want to sleep with a guy. guy. But we just, but we just admiring the. Oh, oh man, damn, 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 nigga, hold it, cool. cool. Now, now, taking into consideration, consideration, if, 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 if we're, we're doing, doing that, that men, men, as straight men, 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 and we're, we're the nigga caught out, out. Yeah. Yeah. we talking, we talking, man, bro, the game, the game, oh shit, you know, you know, nigga caught out. So, so what effect do you think that would have on a woman? Yeah, yeah. This is the opposite sex. 
So, so if, 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 if it was if enough, it was for enough us, for us, now, now, we don't know what this thing look like. We just see the car pull up. You know, you know. So if that has that effect on us, you know, a woman saying, okay, there's a certain thing, man. With um, uh, what's the word? Is it comfort level or? It depends how I feel. Oh, even during, if you can swing it, like no, I, I, I can't pass ball on one hand. And you, I, can't, I can't. I can't jack off. You got to be a bad motherfucker. You got to be after dexterous. I might pause the game. Like, like, you know what? God damn it, bitch, bad motherfucker. Ray. A water fountain. <laughs> man, you just want to give Jan the keys and, and open up the refrigerator. I can't do nothing. But yeah, yeah. man, uh, so I'll, I'll be doing that. So I mean, I'm, I think I'm out the game. This your first trade with you? Yeah, this is my first time in any event, in uh, in any shape or form. First time attending, first time performing, whatever. Uh, I remember last year. Uh, Last year, I think I was some. I think I was doing a weekend somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Ain't like I was invited, but I, I think I was. I was somewhere. I can't remember where I was, but uh, thankfully, man, this year, and I don't think he did a comedy show last year. This is the first time I'm doing a, a comedy show because it's usually, you know, the big trade day on Sunday, yeah, and then Sunday's whatever other week free concerts. Uh, matter of fact, the um, I think I pretty much missed the, um, the basketball game. The basketball game. Did you want to play in it? They didn't invite you to play. Well, I'm here. They started at 12. Well, yeah, I'm glad you came here. But was you was you on the roster before? Yeah. And then they took you off. Well, you know, I took myself off, man. So you used to play ball back then, though. Man, you know. What you play? 2K. Oh, Great, your player. Yeah, man. I was a bad motherfucker. Nah, nah, they didn't invite me. <laughs> but uh, uh, the good thing about it, man, I called Trey to honor him for my show last month for uh -huh. June. Him and DJ Rogers. Yeah. Because every every time I come home, it's a it's a charity right. little check that we give away you know, for for whatever organization, mm -hmm. foundation, whatever. And so, so this show, like, like yo, yo let's on a trade and a relief game and DJ Rogers for the stellar work, work that they did. Hey man, pause for a second. Fuck the jokes. Honor and respect should be given to Trader Truth and DJ Rogers yo. for stepping up the way they did in this city, man. Hey, this city that I love so much, man. They didn't need they didn't waste a second to step into action and lace up their boots and jump in boats and go pick up people, man, and organize and mobilize and, and uh, raise money and rebuild houses and buy clothes and furniture, man. And that, you know, they're still very active. You know, yeah, still. they're still very active, even though the water has been subsided, but they're still very active, um, uh, you know, rebuilding homes and things of that nature. And they're doing it in a very cost uh, effective way. Because I think uh, either Red Cross or somebody, they was like, yeah, it takes, let's just say, I think it, they said it took 90000 to build a new house or whatever. And they was like, yo, we, we, feel, we can do this shit for, with 30000 So for one house, we can build, you know, just short of three houses. And they didn't want to partner with them. Like, fuck, we'll do our own thing, man. We'll do a relief game, man. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that's the essence of, you know, what jump started, uh, you know, them being so active. So, so it's a lot that they're still doing, doing now, even when surrounding cities get affected, man. They ran out to uh, Beaumont, they ran out to uh, Port Arthur. Yeah. And like, Beaumont hey, caught a lot. They caught it bad, didn't they, man? Yeah. They caught the numbers like, hey, if you need rescue, we got boats, call this number. If you need food, call this number, man. If you stuck, call this number. These guys, man, that could easily write a check. Oh, they flood. Yeah, go ahead, man. But time, man, you, yo, these guys stepped up, so. Uh, man, much love and respect to these guys. So I wanted to honor honor them last month on my show. So I called them, hey man, you know, um, I got my show on the 13th, man. And, you know, I, I give away to a charity every year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you're free, I'd like to, you know, make a donation to the relief game, bring you on stage, man, and really, really honor you the way you should be. And he's like, all right, bet. Uh, now I, I, I need to ask you something. I'm like, what's up? Yeah, the 21st of July, what you doing? You tell me. <laughs> like, oh man, I got a, you know, he got that voice. Like, yeah, you got that deep ass voice. You know, I don't know if you know Trey, you'll talk to him. This is him excited. Trey, <laughs> 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 to hustle fight. Oh shit, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs>
That's, That's him. him. All the, I've, I've never, never seen him excited. No, over no, nothing. Him yell. no over nothing. I want to know how he dis Angela E and fucking Niecy Nash is over there. And I'm like, like, what the fuck am I doing? He's like, yo, kid, like, come on, come to this thing, man. Or even I, oh, even I, can, can I roll? Yeah, can I roll? Yeah. Boom. So, yeah, cool dude. Yeah, we spent the, yeah. the coolest. The coolest. Right. So that's my brother, that's man. My brother. And, uh, I look forward to seeing him. That's my guy. Yeah, man. man. Shout out to all of them. Shout out to all of them, man. Dave, Dave back in the bucket. Mark, in the bucket. Tony, Tony. All them boys. Celebrity Dave. Celebrity Dave, man. You know, he's been rocking. You know, that's nothing about Tony. That's nothing about Tony, man. Same group of friends. Right. That he literally grew up with. Literally grew up with. You know, Dave, you know, Dave, Kurt, Pop, Kurt, Pop um, Art, Art, Artsy Fartsy. Artsy Fartsy. Artsy Fartsy. But yeah, man. But yeah, um, man. Um, he's, just, he's just, it's such a it's weird, such a weird com not a weird, but it's, a weird, it's but such an uncommon, uncommon combination of characteristics, characteristics because, because for him to be, him that, to be that genuine, genuine and giving, giving mm -hmm. and generous, generous, and on top of that, top of that to be as funny as like he's like he, he's funnier, he's funnier than, than a lot of people's lot of people. oh yeah favorite oh, comedian favorite com oh yeah funny as oh, hell. hell no matter who that no comedian may be the the amount the, of decibels that, that, that he's able to produce in a show in a show yo yo dude's funny dude's not not many can many produce the same. There's a short list. A short I list. went to his show I twice. Show here twice. back to back when I was running that weekend. That weekend. Right, he, he came to me that Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Everybody was, everybody man, was, everybody was everybody crying, laughing. He was going to the crowd. Like he would interact with the crowd and stuff too. Dude is funny. Your man is bad. So these combinations, things now. Who's that good? That good. And still that much of a. That much of a. It's like he's. It's like just enough celebrity and just enough human being. Human being. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like he's a human being first. Yeah. And then by the way after that. Yeah. I'm very good at this very thing that I do as well, yeah. you know, but, um, above all, above all, you know, I'm a man and I'm a member of, um, society. I'm a member of the human race first. Then after that, you can apply whatever titles, celebrity, comic, actor, whatever, you know, and that's the dopest thing about him, man. He's just genuine down to earth, man. And just, Shooting the shit. Shooting I remember before I got, I remember into, I got into this space with him. Space I think I, him, like I one of the first times I met him was at the Houston Improv. Houston he was coming out, was coming out. and, uh, and uh, I went to go check out a show. And the show's over. He's walking out. I guess maybe to get the ride or whatever. He's on his phone and shit. They were just walk. My just walking around just outside at the Houston Improv, going to the parking lot. I'm like, I say yo. I say yo. What you doing here walking you like you're a regular like person? Regular like, person. Like, I am a regular person. I am a regular person. <laughs> That's how it was last time I seen him in park. Feels like just walking, like, taking like, pictures with people on the street. It was just the, it was it was the most the, simple answer. Like, like, I am a regular person. I am a regular person. Yeah. yeah. And then even and then though I though I uh, gotten, uh, gotten to know him uh, a little closer uh, after that, after it's that. true. It's true. Yeah. It's one of he's like I'm just a regular nigga, man. I just happen to be. I just happen to be. I've I've learned how to monetize this ability that I have. To, for being funny. being funny, outside of that, outside of that, what the fuck? What's the difference between me and you, mm -hmm. or me and the, the janitor at, at uh, wherever, or the guy wherever, at the drive-through drive at you know the fast food, food restaurant? Fast food restaurant. The fuck, yeah, and that's really how he really is. Really how he is. No facade. No facade. Man. It's not even a, not even a, a, a PC thing PC or thing. a publicity thing. That, hey, look everybody, I'm the cool guy. I'm the cool guy. Yeah. This is genuinely who this guy is. Right. I could be all day talking about Tony Rock. Yeah, that's. That's the, real, that's the guy. That's the guy. So I want to be just. Like, I want to be just like. <laughs> <laughs> so what's so what's next for you after the training weekend? After training weekend. Uh, back to New York, uh, York man. New York, I might be going to Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta next weekend for this for, for this show I picked up. I don't know the nigga ain't seen no deposit yet, so we'll see. Oh shit! But it's a good chance I'll be in Atlanta for this.